On this day number 245, I pray that the Lord will bless you real good. Here's what we read today, 1 Chronicles 15 and 16, the first half of Proverbs 19, and 1 Thessalonians 4. Yesterday we heard about the first attempt to move the Ark of the Covenant, more about David's family and his defeat of the Philistines. 1 Chronicles 15 David now built several buildings for himself in the city of David. He also prepared a place for the ark of God and set up a special tent for it. Then he commanded, No one except the Levites may carry the ark of God. The Lord has chosen them to carry the ark of the Lord and to serve him forever. Then David summoned all Israel to Jerusalem to bring the ark of the Lord to the place he had prepared for it. This is the number of descendants of Aaron, the priests, and Levites who were called together. From the clan of Kohath, 120, with Uriel as the leader. From the clan of Merari, 220, with Asiah as their leader. From the clan of Gershon, 130, with Joel as their leader. From the descendants of Elizaphan, 200, with Shemaiah as their leader. From the descendants of Hebron, 80, with Eliel as their leader. From the descendants of Uziel, 112, with Aminadab as their leader. Then David summoned the priests, Zadok and Abiathar, and these Levite leaders, Uriel, Asaiah, Joel, Shemaiah, Eliel, and Aminadab. He said to them, You are the leaders of the Levite families. You must purify yourselves and all your fellow Levites, so you can bring the ark of the Lord, the God of Israel, to the place I have prepared for it. Because you Levites did not carry the ark the first time, the anger of the Lord our God burst out against us. We failed to ask God how to move it properly. So the priests and the Levites purified themselves in order to bring the ark of the Lord, the God of Israel, to Jerusalem. Then the Levites carried the ark of God on their shoulders with its carrying poles, just as the Lord had instructed Moses. David also ordered the Levite leaders to appoint a choir of Levites who were singers and musicians to sing joyful songs to the accompaniment of harps, lyres, and cymbals. So the Levites appointed Haman, son of Joel, along with his fellow Levites, Asaph, son of Berechiah, and Ethan, son of Cushaya, from the clan of Marari. The following men were chosen as their assistants, Zechariah, Jaaziel, Shemiramoth, Jehiel, Unni, Eliab, Benaiah, Maaseah, Matithia, Eliphelehu, Mikneya, and the gatekeepers Obed-Edom and Jael. The musicians, Haman, Asaph, and Ethan, were chosen to sound the bronze cymbals. Zechariah, Aziel, Shemiramoth, Jehiel, Uni, Eliab, Maaseah, and Benaiah were chosen to play the harps. Matithia, Eliphelehu, Mikneya, Obededam, Jael, and Azariah were chosen to play the lyres. Kenania, the head Levite, was chosen as the choir leader because of his skill. Berechiah and Elkanah were chosen to guard the ark. Shebaniah, Josaphat, Nathaniel, Mamasai, Zechariah, Benaiah, and Eliezer, all of whom were priests, were chosen to blow the trumpets as they marched in front of the Ark of God. Obededam and Jehiah were chosen to guard the Ark. Then David and the elders of Israel and the generals of the army went to the house of Obededam to bring the Ark of the Lord's Covenant up to Jerusalem with a great celebration. And because God was clearly helping the Levites as they carried the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, they sacrificed seven bulls and seven rams. David was dressed in a robe of fine linen, as were all the Levites who carried the Ark and also the singers, and Kenaniah, the choir leader. David was also wearing a priestly garment. So all Israel brought up the Ark of the Lord's Covenant with shouts of joy, the blowing of ram's horns and trumpets, the clashing of cymbals, and loud playing on harps and lyres. 
But as the ark of the Lord's covenant entered the city of David, Michal, the daughter of Saul, looked down from her window. When she saw King David skipping about and laughing with joy, she was filled with contempt for him. 1 Chronicles 16 They brought the ark of God and placed it inside the special tent David had prepared for it, and they presented burnt offerings and peace offerings to God. When he had finished his sacrifices, David blessed the people in the name of the Lord. Then he gave to every man and woman in all Israel a loaf of bread, a cake of dates, and a cake of raisins. David appointed the following Levites to lead the people in worship before the ark of the Lord, to invoke his blessings, to give thanks, and to praise the Lord, the God of Israel. Asaph, the leader of this group, sounded the cymbals. Second to him was Zechariah, followed by Jael, Shemiramoth, Jehiel, Matithia, Eliab, Benaiah, Obed-Edom, and Jael. They played the harps and lyres. The priests Benaiah and Jehaziel played the trumpets regularly before the Ark of God's Covenant. On that day David gave to Asaph and his fellow Levites this song of thanksgiving to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim His greatness. Let the whole world know what He has done. Sing to Him, yes, sing His praises. Tell everyone about His wonderful deeds. Exult in His holy name. Rejoice, you who worship the Lord. Search for the Lord and for His strength. Continually seek Him. Remember the wonders He has performed. His miracles and the rulings he has given, you children of his servant Israel, you descendants of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord, our God. His justice is seen throughout the land. Remember his covenant forever, the commitment he made to a thousand generations. This is the covenant he made with Abraham, and the oath he swore to Isaac. He confirmed it to Jacob as a decree, and to the people of Israel as a never-ending covenant. I will give you the land of Canaan as your special possession. He said this when you were few in number, a tiny group of strangers in Canaan. They wandered from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another, yet he did not let anyone oppress them. He warned kings on their behalf, Do not touch my chosen people, and do not hurt my prophets. Let the whole earth sing to the Lord. Each day proclaim the good news that he saves. Publish his glorious deeds among the nations. Tell everyone about the amazing things he does. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. The gods of other nations are mere idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty surround him. Strength and joy fill his dwelling. O oh, nations of the world, recognize the Lord. Recognize that the Lord is glorious and strong. Give to the Lord the glory He deserves. Bring your offering and come into His presence. Worship the Lord in all His holy splendor. Let all the earth tremble before Him. The world stands firm and cannot be shaken. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Tell all the nations, the Lord reigns. Let the sea and everything in it shout his praise. Let the fields and their crops burst out with joy. Let the trees of the forest rustle with praise, for the Lord is coming to judge the earth. Give thanks to the Lord. For he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Cry out, 
Save us, O God, of our salvation. Gather and rescue us from among the nations, so we can thank your holy name and rejoice and praise you. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who lives from everlasting to everlasting. And all the people shouted, Amen, and praised the Lord. David arranged for Asaph and his fellow Levites to serve regularly before the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, doing whatever needed to be done each day. This group included Obed-Edom, son of Jeduthun, Hossa, and sixty-eight other Levites as gatekeepers. Meanwhile, David stationed Zadok the priest and his fellow priests at the tabernacle of the Lord at the place of worship in Gibeon where they continued to minister before the Lord. They sacrificed the regular burnt offerings to the Lord each morning and evening on the altar set aside for that purpose, obeying everything written in the law of the Lord as he had commanded Israel. David also appointed Haman, Jeduthun, and others chosen by name to give thanks to the Lord for his faithful love endures forever. They used their trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments to accompany their songs of praise to God, and the sons of Juduthan were appointed as gatekeepers. Then all the people returned to their homes, and David turned and went home to bless his own family. Our highlighted verse for today is verse 14, Fathers can give their sons an inheritance of houses and wealth, but only the Lord can give an understanding wife. Proverbs 19 Better to be poor and honest than to be dishonest and a fool. Enthusiasm without knowledge is no good. Haste makes mistakes. People ruin their lives by their own foolishness, and then are angry at the Lord. Wealth makes many friends. Poverty drives them away. A false witness will not go unpunished nor will a liar escape. Many seek favors from a ruler. Everyone is the friend of a person who gives gifts. The relatives of the poor despise them. How much more will their friends avoid them? Though the poor plead with them, their friends are gone. To acquire wisdom is to love oneself. People who cherish understanding will prosper. A false witness will not go unpunished, and a liar will be destroyed. It isn't right for a fool to live in luxury, or for a slave to rule over princes. Sensible people control their temper. They earn respect by overlooking wrongs. The king's anger is like a lion's roar, but his favor is like dew on the grass. A foolish child is calamity to a father. A quarrelsome wife is as annoying as constant dripping. Fathers can give their sons an inheritance of houses and wealth, but only the Lord can give an understanding wife. Lazy people sleep soundly, but idleness leaves them hungry. Yesterday we heard that Paul and his companions prayed, and God answered. The Thessalonian believers stayed strong in their believing in the gospel. 1 Thessalonians 4 
Finally, dear brothers and sisters, we urge you in the name of the Lord Jesus to live in a way that pleases God as we have taught you. You live this way already, and we encourage you to do so even more. For you remember what we taught you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. God's will is for you to be holy, so stay away from all sexual sin. Then each of you will control his own body and live in holiness and honor, not in lustful passion like the pagans who do not know God and his ways. Never harm or cheat a Christian brother in this matter by violating his wife, for the Lord avenges all such sins, as we have solemnly warned you before. God has called us to live holy lives, not impure lives. Therefore, anyone who refuses to live by these rules is not disobeying human teaching, but is rejecting God, who gives His Holy Spirit to you. But we don't need to write to you about the importance of loving each other, for God himself has taught you to love one another. Indeed, you already show your love for all the believers throughout Macedonia. Even so, dear brothers and sisters, we urge you to love them even more. Make it your goal to live a quiet life, minding your own business and working with your hands just as we instructed you before. Then people who are not Christians will respect the way you live, and you will not need to depend on others. And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died, so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him any believers who have died. We tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. First, the Christians who have died will rise from their graves. Then, together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. So encourage each other with these words. Continuing a little bit on this theme in chapter 5. Now, Concerning how and when all this will happen, dear brothers and sisters, we don't really need to write to you, for you know quite well that the day of the Lord's return will come unexpectedly like a thief in the night. When people are saying, everything is peaceful and secure, then disaster will fall on them as suddenly as a pregnant woman's labor pains begin, and there will be no escape. But you aren't in the dark about these things, dear brothers and sisters, and you won't be surprised when the day of the Lord comes like a thief. For you are all children of the light and of the day. We don't belong to the darkness and night. So be on your guard, not asleep like the others. Stay alert and clear-headed. Night is the time when people sleep and drinkers get drunk. But let us who live in the light be clear-headed, protected by the armor of fully believing and love, and wearing as our helmet the confidence of our salvation. For God chose to save us through our Lord Christ Jesus, not to pour out his anger on us. Christ died for us so that whether we are dead or alive, when he returns, we can live with him forever. So encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing.
You know, as I pray today, I feel like I have prayed so many times that for the same thing that I will pray for today. But it is the emphasis of this passage. How can I avoid it? Let's pray together. Our Father and our God, O Lord Jesus, thank you for the promise of your returning. Help us to believe it, Lord, and if our eyes are open, certainly we see the signs. Therefore, Lord, help us to anticipate your coming. And Paul says it twice in this passage, Do the things that please the Lord even more. You're doing them already. Do them even more. Lord, help us to excel. Help us to do more. Help us to extend ourselves further. The first thing, Lord, help us to live holy lives. That means we are going to reject sexual sin. Oh, Lord, help us. These are the hardest things to reject. And we need to love each other. Help us to do it more. Help us also to live the kind of lives that other people will respect. And Father, again I pray, this teaching teaches that you will return Lord, convince us of this and make it the foundation stone of our lives. And one result of that is that we will not grieve for those who pass on like the world does. Lord, we pray for these three pieces of armor today, that we would have the armor of belief and the armor of love and we would wear as our helmet the confidence that you have saved us. 